Okay, I'm going to start now. I'm a bit nervous. I love you all, thank you for being here. I'm just gonna be like, comfortable, okay? I'm gonna get comfortable and just like, read like as if, let me move this. I'm just gonna read as in like, I'm just reading how I always do at home. Well, like, well no, that's not true because I don't read. This is the first book I'm going to read, <clears throat> which I'm excited for. But this is how I would be reading at home, so. Hi, and um, this book, I need to give trigger warnings. Um, it can be a bit difficult to listen to um, with the triggers, um, but it's okay. My soft voice, um, we will all be okay. We'll have each other as well. And it's 18 plus, so if you're not 18 plus, please take your own responsibility um, and care. Okay, um, so the book is Breathe by Sophia Stone. For Rock, all the love, Sophia Singh. London 2021. She signed the book for me. Thank you, Sophia. Meet Ryan, aka Joey Hall, disgraced former adult entertainer with more issues than he can keep track of. His boyfriend left him for an Instagram twin with 150k followers. His mum wants him out of her spare room, and then there's that idiot at college who just won't take no for an answer. Meet Lou. He was once the rich kid who just been gifted his first car, and now he doesn't even own a bike. He's also slumming it in a house full of ungrateful siblings, and his first trip to the food bank gave him some goddamn emotional scars. Life is getting better though, and he's acing it at college as well as making some brilliant new friends. Well, except for that stuck-up twat waffle, Ryan, who won't talk to him and refuses to like his brilliant social media posts. Breathe is the first of Sophia Soames new London series. These standalone novels will follow the ups and downs of four couples living extraordinary, ordinary London lives. This book contains a brief description of an off-page sexual assault. For R, home is not necessarily where you want to be when you are happy. Home is that place we long for when we are lost at that lowest point of hurt. I just want to show that. <laughs> Thank you, Sophia. Chapter 1. Joey Hole Official. This is what heartbreak looks like. This was never a picture meant to be shared, but was a spur of the moment <coughs> snap in a second of sheer insanity. <coughs> this was the moment when the love of my life told me he couldn't take it anymore. This is what love looks like when someone breaks your heart. It wasn't mine that broke that evening. I was too stressed and annoyed at him to notice his distress. It wasn't my tears, not my hurt. This was his world crashing down as I grabbed a stupid photo so I could keep up with my social media and pretend everything was fine. It wasn't, because I was too busy with a life he no longer shared, too detached to notice the tears in his eyes and the pain etched on his face. This was the day it all broke. This is what heartbreak looks like. And this, this is all on me. Ryan. I felt physically sick. Well, that feeling was nothing new, since I felt sick every morning when I woke up and realised that I was still me, and that I once again lived in my childhood room in my mum's house in Forkton Green, a small borough of the outskirts of London. Moving back in with my mum and going back to school was a totally ridiculous situation, since I was 23 and too old for all this shit. Yet starting over like this was nothing. I shouldn't be feeling remotely nervous about it. My first day of college should be a total non-event compared to some of the things I've so effortlessly lived through before. Thrived on even. The attention, the people, the bright lights and careless fun. But it was like I'd done all those things in a different life where I was a different person, not the terrified kid 
who was walking around trying to find Lecture Hall B at West London Community College. The building was all concrete hallway and colourful doors, with names cleverly plucked from the locality, names that had been the foundations of my childhood growing up in the leafy suburb of London. The spoiled, only child of perfectly, amicably divorced parents. I was back home, where I belonged. Even my mum had said that, holding me tight as she pushed a lunchbox into my shell-shocked hands. I wasn't a kid anymore. I was a grown-up, and I was trying to rebuild what had once been the life of Ryan Aspinall. Ryan Aspinall, the promising footballer, and A-grade student with a handful of A-levels and opportunities galore. The 19-year-old Ryan had loved, had followed none of those paths. He'd followed a guy called Henry to New York and built some kind of pseudo life, which had come crashing down on him in a spectacular fashion six weeks before his 23rd birthday. I had survived the birthday, crying into a glass of milk while my mother stroked my hair and my dad sang happy birthday to me over the phone. I had dragged myself through Christmas, mostly sleeping and crying. I had cracked the screen on my phone, slamming it into the wall when Henry's number had appeared on the screen. I wasn't buying a new one or getting a pick. The splinter on the screen was a reminder to me every day that my life was broken. I was broken. Everything was bloody shattered and I didn't know how to fix any of it. It was now January and my body was still not my own. My mind was a delicate place where I was constantly walking a tightrope between crying my eyes out and angry defiance. I hated Henry. I hated him with a passion I could barely understand. At the same time, I loved him so passionately that my whole body would squirm into a curled up ball on the pavement just thinking about him. His face, his chiseled face, his beautiful eyes that no longer looked at me in awe and wonder. He didn't love me anymore. He wasn't even attracted to me. He didn't like the person I had become, and I couldn't say I blamed him. I didn't care much for the person he had become either, but we had been a unit for so long, I had simply forgotten who I was supposed to be when I had to stand on my own two feet. My name is Ryan Aspinall, and I am a student. Just the thought in my head made me cackle. I wanted to cry. I hadn't been Ryan for years. He had always called me Joey, and I had called him Rue because he used to carry me around our flat like I was an overgrown baby kangaroo. He would hold me, carrying me in his arms whenever I felt low. He used to hug me, and I would cling to him until I felt better. My little Joey, he would soothe, stroking my back and kissing my temples, whispering that he loved me. He had always loved me, until he didn't love me enough to stay, and had cancelled the lease on our Manhattan conduct and told me I had six weeks to move out. He had left the same day and moved in with an Instagram twink with 150k followers and an exclusive deal with OnlyFans. There had been no big argument, no major discovery of cheating or hidden agendas, no guy on the side. We had been open, anyway, right from the start. We had always been solid and we had loved each other. I knew that. But deep down, I'd, al I'd also known that he would leave one day, with or without me, because the life we'd lived had not been sustainable. 